Lakeside is another tool, and one interesting feature is that it can do Mac physical computers in addition to monitoring VDI. That's something I always missed in Liquidware. Another tool is Control Up, a very, very uh, promising tool. Uh, I played with it myself, I liked it. Uh, it is cloud based. Uh, however, Liquidware is still, to, still is my preference at this point, but Control Up is probably one of the best also because it can also do uh, things like uh, deploy batch scripts on your, on your uh, desktops and, and so on. And all the data is in the cloud, therefore you can compare the data against other environments that put their data in the cloud. Next thing is another tool. The unique feature about that one is that it has a user feedback module where, for example, if the performance of the desktop is bad, you could create a campaign where there's a pop-up on the user's uh, machine that says, oh, uh, do you think your performance is good? You rate it from you know, one to five, okay? And you rate it, and all that data is collected and compared against the other data. And it, it's, it's very useful. Uh, however, next thing has some other disadvantages. It's not, you know, it's not cloud-based. Um, so, so yeah, next thing is, is an interesting tool also. And there's a few other tools out there. Uh, seems like the competition at this point is, is, is pretty hot among those tools. More and more are popping on the market. The one thing to remember is that you cannot use your server monitoring tool to monitor VDI. Don't do that. Because first of all, a lot of times it doesn't have the right metrics. And second, uh, you know, it's not made for that and there's just, it's just very difficult to work with. So, for example, VM Turbo, while a great tool, and they claim they could do VDI, there's just not enough metrics that can do VDI, okay? So get one of the tools here. Of course, VMware has vRealize Operations for Horizon, which I also tried. Um, it's, it's gotten much better over the time, and uh, you know, at this point, it's, it's competitive with other, other tools. Um, and uh, Login VSI is one unique tool that is really different from anything else is that it doesn't monitor as you, um, as you have um, the environment already. It, it, it allows you to simulate an environment before you implement VDI. Great tool, the whole industry uses it as, as you know, for simulations and for benchmarks. Um, if you are a very large environment, very large company, use that tool. If you're a very small environment, it's probably cost prohibitive to do those kinds of simulations with login VSI, okay? So what are some most important metrics for VDI performance monitoring? And I'm not listing all of them. I'm just listing the most important because this session is too short. So this is more for reference. The front end metrics are number one, user feedback. Extremely important. You should always have user feedback. Uh, even if you just walk up to the users and ask how they are, uh, you know, or you could do a survey or something, but you, know, you need to know what the users are feeling. Because that may be different from your data. User login delay, how long it takes to log in. Application load time, in double click the application, how long it takes to load. And how many times applications crash or applications not responding. Those are front end metrics. They'll give you a good idea whether the user is having a difficulty. Along with the user feedback, provides you kind of a first line of defense. Then you go to the backend metrics, which are purely technical metrics like page file utilization, disk queue, disk latency, CPU queue, network bandwidth, uh, packet loss, and CPU ready. And there's, there's a few others which I'm not listing. So once you looked at these metrics and you know what the thresholds are, I'm listing them here. Uh, these are the general industry thresholds that I come upon and uh, upon doing that. What do you do? Well, the first thing to solve your VDI problem in most cases is adding resources. I know it sounds cliche and some people are gonna say, well, uh, why are you recommending adding resources? Maybe you should be doing other things. Well, adding resources is gonna get you the fastest result at the moment and it's the easiest thing to do, okay? Uh, other things are more difficult to do, and I will definitely list the most important things here. But adding resources is the first line of defense. 
the first resource you should, you should add, and if you don't have it already for VDI, uh, you should because the whole VDI industry is on it. It's all Flash Array. Absolute must for VDI, okay? Why is it a must? Well, here's a situation from a real environment, okay? We have a, eh. we have a, uh, a blue bar, which is a disk, the disk queue, okay? And for this particular situation, with a mechanical disk, NFS storage, the disk queue, the peak disk queue was somewhere around uh, nine and a half, okay? When we went to all flash fiber channel storage, it dropped to somewhere like one, okay? And that's the peak. For the average, all the way to the right, you don't even see it. It's almost zero. And that's what it should be. Right? So that's what Flash does to your VDI. The disk queue just drops. And that's one of the most important parameters for storage. The other things that you can add are, of course, CPU and, and memory. And here's another real case from uh, one of our customers where we have a, on the left here, we have a baseline. And uh, the, the baseline is basically what we had before. The blue bar is page file utilization percentage. In the middle, we did a test case by just doubling and tripling RAM. Depends on the user. Some users doubled, some tripled, and, and doubled you know, or tripled vCPUs. Not the right strategy, but just for test case. And we decided to see what happens. Well, if you look, the page file utilization dropped significantly. The blue bar dropped by 92% as a result of adding RAM primarily. Okay? And uh, the, the orange, the CPU queue, also dropped significantly. You can see from first to the second case. right? And the disk queue, the disk queue didn't drop as much, just a little bit, okay? Because remember, this was not flash storage. This was just um, CPU and memory. Finally, we decided now we're going to adjust the CPU and memory correctly, okay? As much as the user needs, and, and we, we came down on it, but we went to flash storage. So what was the effect? As you can see, the, the peak page file the blue uh, went up a bit. It's not as much as in the first, first slot, OK? We're still getting 78% uh, difference, but it's definitely more. And then on the orange peak CPU queue, uh, it also went up, right? Um, but if you look at the peak disk queue, the disk queue dropped completely, OK? Um, so what we're gaining here is, we're gaining storage performance. And um, however, however, what you see here is that adding RAM on the, on the front end is always better, of course, because flash is slower than RAM. Right? Um, and in fact, you know, adding too many EV CPUs can actually make your CPU queue worse, right? if you see the, the orange bar all the way to the right. Um, there's also a couple of other metrics here. Um, like applications not responding, they went down all the way from the beginning to the two test cases. That's the, that's the red dotted line. And um, the login delay kept going down, the purple line uh, on the top. So I said you should add CPUs carefully. Why is it? Well, here's another real example from another uh, company where we are graphing the CPU ready parameter from the ESX host, and that's the orange and the red bars, OK? And the CPU ready means um, how much time does the VM has to wait until its instructions are processed on the CPU. And that should not be more than 5% per VM. The 5% here is the green line. You can see that uh, most of these bars are above the green line, which means that this customer is suffering from bad CPU ready. However, if you look at the, the uh, gray uh, line on top, it is at about 47%. That's the CPU used. 
So you're only using 47% of the ESX host, yet you're having bad CPU ready and your users are suffering. Usually a CPU queue also goes up in that case. So you have to be careful and not add too many vCPUs to your VMs. Another important optimization is antivirus. Okay, uh, here's another real example of doing uh, antivirus optimizations. Okay, uh, what you see in here is the before antivirus optimization, the peak disk IOPS went down, the black went down significantly, okay, by 58%, and that's because antivirus is not scanning. You turn off all the scans of antivirus except real time, so it's not scanning. And also, what you see is the blue, the page file utilization went down. Because it's not scanning, it's not accessing the disk, it's not going to memory and accessing the disk. So we gain the page file performance and IOPS performance by optimizing antivirus. Finally, you can optimize your, your image for VDI. And I don't have a graph for that, but thanks to Login VSI, they did a test with their tool. And basically, here's a comparison of Windows 10. And you can do, uh, as you can see, the default Windows is blue. The optimized Windows is, is orange. And you can see, you can do a lot more Windows desktops on the machine with the, uh, with the usage of VMware OS optimization tool, OK? So please use that. It gives you a good performance boost. And these are the main metrics in optimization of VDI and user experience. And if you do those metrics, and if you uh, optimize your experience, then you will never get that question, why is my VDI slow? And you will get that holy grail of having user experience the same or better as on the physical desktop. Thank you. <laughs>